my name is vipul and i have 11 years of it experience during my it experience i have worked on multiple tools so i started my journey from from the informatica data migration tool and then i moved on to the sap world in that i worked on sap data services uh, which is again a data migration tool which is specific to sap and then i worked on sap hana 2.0 on premise as well as sap hana on cloud and after that i worked on sap analytics cloud which is a report reporting tool available by SAP and it has a lot of great features available to us and then after working in those technologies i moved on to S uh, the snowflake data warehouse and also mysql apart from that i also i am also associated with data vision as a trainer for mysql and snowflake data warehouse so let's get started up so now uh, this is a very quick introduction we have this is the pdf uh, uh, which you can see from our data vision team and here you can see that what all tools we will be uh, doing as a part of this course uh, uh, so we will be doing snowflake data warehouse uh, we will be doing amazon web services we will be doing mysql which is a, uh, which is a sql compliant database and then we will be using the click and then the dpt which is an adl migration tool okay so uh me uh vipul sharma as your as you might have seen in the advertisement or in the brochure that two people i have been mentioned so i will be me i mean vipul sharma will be taking care of the sql part which is doing the mysql and the snowflake data warehouse whereas the aws and the dbt part will be taken care by different experienced member we have over here so he will be taking care of those two and um then uh, we will be handing over to them and he will take care of that so, so this is how we will be doing this thing and then later on once the so krishna sir will be anyhow taking care of the aws and dbt and meanwhile we will be doing that after the completion of course uh, we are just not providing the certificates for this uh, we will be actually helping you with the placements as well uh, as soon as your course is over we have placement assistance we have resume building help uh, we will help you until you get the placements and then we will be also helping you with the snow pro course certification as well so it is an end to end solution okay so once you have um once we have all the details uh so at that time uh, you will be very comfortable uh, either if you want to have a switch within a same company or within a different organization so we will be helping you right from the day one to the day either you get certified or you get the right amount of uh, package you want based on either in your same organization or in the different organization okay so we will not be lose leaving you just after giving the certification that is the very good difference which i which i have personally noticed Uh, of the different organization versus the KSR data vision because other organization just give the training and they give you the certification that's it but here we have the opportunity we get the end to end support from these data vision okay so now if we just go down so here you can see a bit more information about KSR data vision and about this of the warehouse and let us first of all see the course of it so um here we have seen that these are i will just walk you through through the different topics we will be covering as a part of this course uh, so we have introduction to snowflake cloud so here we will see so because uh, see whenever you are going to the snowflake data warehouse uh, so snowflake data warehouse has been marketed as the cloud based data warehousing solution so before learning the snowflake data warehouse we should be very clear of these two parts we should know what is cloud cloud based so what all terminology we have in the cloud what are different deployment models we have in the cloud and so on and we should also understand the basic concepts about the data warehouses so what all data warehouses are are different terminologies associated to the data, data warehousing and then once we are comfortable with these terms then we will be very comfortable to start with this snowflake data warehouse okay so here you can see that if we talk about snowflake data warehouse specifically then uh, we will start learning uh, with the key concepts and architecture we will learn support a cloud platform cloud regions what is what are different snowflake additions so and then we will see how we can connect to the snowflake Snowflake Data Warehouse Cloud account, so, and uh, we will see what is Snowflake Console, Connected Send Drivers, Snow SQL, which is a CLI client, and then we will see what all virtual warehouses. So virtual warehouse is actually a compute layer we have within the Snowflake Data Warehouse, and these are very highly scalable. And then uh, we will see what are databases, tables, views, schemas, what is internal stage, what is external stage, and then we will see how we can actually load the data within the Snowflake Data Warehouse because that is the most important thing because the the data warehouses collection of data from 
different domains. So that is why we need to know how we can load the data. So we will see different ways of loading data from multiple sources into the Snowflake Data Warehouse. So we will see the data loading, uh, how we can do the bulk data loading using copy command, uh, how we can do the continuous loading using Snowpipe, how we can do the loading using web interfaces, how we can query the data, how we can transform the data during loading, how we can load the semi-structured or unstructured data in the Snowflake Data Warehouse. And then once we have uh, once we have set up our account, we have loaded the data, we have learned how we can load the data from multiple uh, locations or multiple ways using multiple technologies or tools, then we will see how we can unload the data. So in Snowflake Data Warehouse, we also have a capability to export the data into the files or into different formats as well. So we will see how we can do that. We will see the overview features and consideration of this data unloading. And then we will see unloading, how we can unload the data into the Snowflake stage, how we can unload the data to AWS S3, and we will also discuss about unloading it to GCS or MSSR. And then once we are comfortable with that, we will talk about how we can manage the data in the cloud. We will also talk about how we can create multiple stored procedure and tasks, how we can handle the rejected records at load time and analyze the errors. Because just in case if you are loading the data from one service uh, or from one location and we want and there is an error. And if you want to analyze that, we will also do that. Okay. And then we have we will understand what is data sharing, what is cloning, uh, what is data masking and managing security. And we will see there is a great feature called as time travel and fails if as well in this software data warehouse. And then as you can see here, this entire course, I'm not just, not just talking about this software data warehouse, but the four tools which we have already seen, it is going to be somewhere around two and a half to three months. A maximum we can go up to three months. So it is a three month long instructor led online and classroom training. Most of it is online training because here you can see that I will be taking the online classes and you can take your classes at the comfort of your wherever you are and you do not have to worry about anything. Okay, you just have to join the session and enjoy the journey. And what I really want to say to you is that just really enjoy the sessions. Don't take it as a race. Just to try to feel each and everything. Uh, the good thing about this session is that we will be having the classes in the morning. Once you are comfortable, it might take a bit of a time to be comfortable with this time. It also took me a time to be comfortable waking up at 6.30 a.m. and then taking the class. But after some time, you will actually realize that this is the best time to take the classes because your mind is fresh. Uh, just have a cup of a coffee or a tea, whatever you like, and you can start exploring. And once your session is over, either you can be joining your offices or if you are working from home, then you can give more time to during the day to revise the concept we had, which we have already uh, discussed. But if the session is somewhere in the in the afternoon, in the evening, then it be where it becomes very difficult to revise those concepts. So once the session is over, you can revise the concepts, and then in the next class, uh, you should be ready with your doubts. You can note it down, or even when, then we will also create a WhatsApp group over there. You can also ask your doubts at any time, a number of times, and you can also connect with us directly. Okay. So all these things are there and during the course, if you need any questions, if you have any concerns, if you have any placement assistance help, if you need any any help, then we are there for you. Uh, but we also need some some of the efforts from your side as well. So we need you to make sure that you are also learning parallelly and you are also giving your best. Because uh, what we are targeting is that if we are starting, let us say on 1st of September, so October, November, December, on 1st of December, you should be having one package in your hand okay so we will so for that we have to work together we have to so we are ready to work together and uh, we will be learning a lot of concepts a lot of new things and we will really enjoy the journey so that is the more main thing which i really want you all to do uh, do not take it as a stressful thing do not stress out to learn these things quickly because anyhow we understand that it will take a bit of a time to understand these concepts to digest these things so that is why equal amount of efforts will be required from your side as well, okay? And then, first of all, we will not start with Snowflake Data Warehouse. We will first of all understand about the uh, the cloud terminologies, the data warehousing concepts, and then we will first of all move on to SQL. Okay, so as, as part of SQL, we will be doing MySQL. And in MySQL, we will see all the different uh, different manipulation techniques we have within that. So we will see how we can, first of all, install the MySQL, how we can set up the MySQL, and then how we can create the workspace, how we can prepare some simple data. And then once the data is there, we will see how we can actually play around with the data. So we will see how we can retrieve the data. We're using different clauses. 
using different operators, filter conditions, how we can order the data. And then we will also see what are row functions. So they are very important. So row functions or window functions. Okay. Okay. So is it fine? Um, you can let me know as I have said that if you have any problem, please. Hey, let people, me know. I have one question. Uh, how much yeah. your experience you have in Snowflake? In Snowflake Data Warehouse, I have two and a half years of experience. Totally is 2.5. So I have one requirement, right? So, uh, so I have a table in the, sorry, in the staging, I have file, right? From the UI, I want to download it, right? Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat? See, we have a staging, internal stage, external stage, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so suppose one application which is copying the data, right? Put the file into the staging, right? Okay. Now I have a wave interface from where the user will download that file. Okay. No, I don't want to use that uh, unload command and all that, right? Uh, see, uh, the problem here is that we cannot directly access the internal stages. Uh, so that way we cannot have an external state. So if you have to put that file into, you have to unload that file into a local folder. From yeah. there you can access it. But if there is, I mean, there is no way we can directly access the internal stages. So you are covering the advanced topic, right? Because basically yes, yes. that I know that the advanced topic like event uh, table and uh, there are so many topics when you come, right? Dynamic tables. Yes, yes, we will be taking that because we keep on updating the course as well. So what all topics we have, uh, we will be covering. If, uh, so whatever new topics are there, uh, we will be taking care of that as well. We have well, dynamic well, tables. Well, we have that tuning part. Mm -hmm. I am interested more in the tuning part actually. Okay, the yeah, tuning part we will also see. Search of uh, we will... cluster key and uh, reclustering. Mm -hmm. That all we will cover. So if you let me uh then if i go to the this one snowflake documentation so here as well you can see all the different topics which we will be covering so here you can see that we will see how you can connect to your snowflake and then within that we have the virtual warehouses we will see this multi cluster uh the query acceleration service the monitoring load and snow up to optimize virtual warehouses Okay, and then uh, we will also see these different table structures. We have temporary and transient tables and so on, and the search optimization service. Okay, hello. Hi, Deep Nair. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. So, uh, thank you so much. So all these topics we will be covering. So is it fine? I mean, uh, yeah. I can get messages that I am speaking very fast. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, is yeah, it fine your, now? Your, your base is very fast for normal. Sorry base, for that. I can't... <laughs> Okay, okay. Is it fine now? No, no. See, you're you're talking the uh, the this thing, right? Topics and all. They're very fast. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That was very that's fast. Okay, I way. will repeat it if that is a problem. Sorry. Okay. For me, it's uh, fine. For other guys, there. For me, it's fine. Okay, for you, it is fine. Okay. So what I will do, I will just quickly go through the topics. If that is very fast, sorry for that. Let me. Uh, so what I will do instead is that I will just show you the topics here in this snowflake documentation. So this is the uh, standard documentation we have for the Snowflake Data Warehouse. Over here, you can actually see all the details and all the documentation. So this is a very great thing. If you are going with the certification, then we can come here. And then uh, over here, I will go through the different topics, which we'll be doing as a part of this course. And the good thing about one more thing about uh, following this snow pro this snowflake documentation is that uh, this is always up to date so if something gets obsolete it also it is also removed from here and also mentioned at the obsolete section and if some new course or new topic comes uh, over here you can see that in over here we have the data loading and over here you will get the new topics as well we have and then we have ml bar with analysis section over here and over here we have a lot of section being added so we have dynamic tables over here. So we will also discuss the dynamic tables. So let me come uh, again from the top to bottom so that we can discuss that. So here we will first of all see if we will anyhow first of all create the Snowflake Data Warehouse um, account. So that will be a free trial account that will be for 30 days. And then uh, once that is there and then 
we will see how all different ways we can connect to our Snowflake data warehouse account. Okay, so here we will see how we can any we can connect using SnowSite. Uh, this classing console is anyhow out of the scope. It is obsolete and this is not available anymore. And we will also see how we can actually connect to using SnowSQL. Okay, so these SnowSQL is also provided by Snowflake Data Warehouse. So we will see once we have seen how we can connect using multiple ways to Snowflake Data Warehouse. Then we will see what are virtual warehouses. So within the virtual warehouses, we have multiple topics like the what are multi clusters, what all we have to consider, and then how we can work with the virtual warehouses and what is the query acceleration service, which is going to help us accelerate our queries. And then we will see how we can monitor the load. And we will also see what are Snowpack optimized virtual warehouses. So once we have understood the virtual warehouses, then we will come to the database tables and views. Over here, we will see what all are the table structures. And then we will see what are micro partitions, what are data clustering, how we can do the clustering, what is automatic clustering, and after that, we will also see there are different type of tables. We have permanent table, we have temporary table, and we have transient tables. And then uh, we have something called as external tables. Then we will understand what are external tables. And after that, we will also see what are what is search optimization service because this is going to help us to accelerate our queries based on our specific use cases. So once we are okay with that, then we will jump on to the next topic uh, to understand what are views what are secured views, what are materialized views, and so on. And then we will also see what all consideration we have to take to create the table design, uh, what is cloning, and what is uh, how the data is actually stored, and what all different uh, procedures and what all different functions we have uh, to actually manipulate the data or to see how much storage is been taken by, taken by a specific storage me method, okay? And then once we have stored all the data and we have created views on top of that, then we will see how we can actually load the data. So we will be focusing more on Amazon S3. So we will see how we can load the data from Amazon S3 buckets. So the very first thing we will be seeing here will be that how uh, we will connect to the S3 buckets and how we can configure the user ID and password and then we can allow the Snowflake Data Warehouse to go to our AWS account and connect to the S3 bucket and then load the data from there. And this will be using, uh, we have two methods of loading. First of all, we have bulk loading, and then we have something called a Snowpipe, which is a real-time loading. So in that, we will see that we have the feature called a Snowpipe in which we will be able to automatically ingest the data from our remote location or internal Snowflake stage into the Snowflake Data Warehouse. So that is called a Snowpipe. So once we, uh, so we also have a capability to do the Snowpipe streaming. We will also understand what is Snowpipe streaming cost and what are different overview about the Snowpipe streaming. Okay. So we can also consume the streaming data within the Snowflake Data Warehouse. So once we have understood about how we can load the data, then it is very important to understand how we can actually manipulate the data within this Snowflake Data Warehouse. So for that, we have different topics such as dynamic tables. Uh, we will understand what are streams, uh, what are tasks, and we will also see how stream tasks work together to provide a, provide a total ETL experience, or if you want to do some uh, pipeline, if you want to define a data pipeline within your Snowflake Data Warehouse, we will also see as a part of this course. And then once the data has been loaded into the Snowflake Data Warehouse, uh, we will also see what is data unloading. So data unloading is actually the opposite. So in the data unloading, we want to actually take the data uh, from the Snowflake Data Warehouse, either, either it is a table or a query, and I will export it into the uh, any other location. It can be your internal stage or external stage as any file format. So we can export the data as CSV, as DSV, as JSON, XML package, so we, there are a lot of supported file formats, so we can export the data. So once we have learned how we can export the data, we will see how we can write the queries. So queries over here will be very similar to the MySQL course, which we have already covered. And then we will also see how we can do that. If there is any deviation in the Snowflake Data Warehouse, we will also see that as a part of these queries. So here you can see that all the SQL queries we also have within the Snowflake Data Warehouse. We will see how we can do joins. So all these joins, subqueries, uh, 
CTE window function will be similar to MySQL, but we will see wherever there is a deviation, we will understand that as well. We have a few estimation function over here, which we will discuss. And then uh, we will not be going to the section ML part analysis because uh, the main focus of this entire course will be Snow Pro Code certification. So this is a bit of an advanced section. So we will not be discussing that, but after that, we will see how we can actually data share the data across different Snowflake data warehouse accounts. So we will see what is data sharing and data collaboration. Okay, we will do a good deep dive into this section. And after that, we will also see what are alerts and notifications. So here we will see we can actually have a feature called as Snowflake alerts in which we can set up an alert. Let us say if a table is growing really, really huge in size, if it is growing at a really fast pace, or if a user who is not intended to access a table, they are accessing that table, then we want an alert to be sent. And we also have an integration to send the email notifications. So we can send an email to the requested participant or the interested people who want to know if something has gone wrong or if something, some process has completed within the Snowflake Data Warehouse. And then as you can really understand that the Snowflake Data Warehouse is going to has a lot of people and is going to have a lot of data in one place then we will also see how we can actually go with the security. So with the security, we will under, we will not go into very deep dive into security, but we will understand what all different security concepts we have within this Snowflake Data Warehouse. We will see, uh, we will understand how we can actually use the SSO uh, for authentication, for authorization purposes. And then we will also see what is key pair authentication rotation and what is MFA and what is author authorization. So it will help you to understand how the security layer has been set up in this Snowflake Data Warehouse, how the user management is done and how the role management is done. And then uh, we are okay with the security. We will go to the data governance. The data governance is actually helping you to secure your data within the Snowflake Data Warehouse. The security section actually focused on the security of the your Snowflake Data Warehouse account as a whole. And then once someone is able to log into your Snowflake Data Warehouse, then you want to make sure that the objects within your Snowflake Data Warehouse are secure or not. So for that, we have data governance. For that, we will see what is object tagging, what is data classification, uh, we have different masking policy, we have column masking policy, we have row masking policy, and we will also see how we can use the data lineage and dependencies. And then once we have done that, after that we will uh, see that anyhow we will be understanding this organization and accounts concept where we will be creating our software data virus account. And after that we will see what is BCDR. So business continuity and data recovery is also a very important concept because you do not want your customers to be affected. Let us say if you are if you are working in let us say US region and your Snowflake Data Warehouse has been compromised and or if there is any problem, then here we will understand different strategies. We can actually make sure that our data is secure or our account is reachable or if we have any strategy so that if in case something is wrong, uh, with our software data warehouse account, we can switch over to some other region or some other uh, instance of our software data warehouse. As a part of this course, we will also understand what is time travel, what is fail safe, and what are the different storage codes we have associated to the business continuity and data records covering. And finally, we will see the performance optimization. We will see how we can actually optimize the performance instance in Snowflake data warehouse. There are a lot of ways to, first of all, we have to find out what is the issue. So for that, we will see how we can explore the execution times, how we can optimize the warehouses for performance and how we'll be optimizing the storage for performance. And then finally, we will see the cost management and the cost management, we will actually understand the different costs associated to the uh, Snowflake Data Warehouse. So we have different costs. So we will see how we can monitor the cost, explore the cost, and then we can control the cost, okay. So all this thing we can understand. So all these is a part of your Snowflake Data Warehouse. And if we go back to MySQL, and in the MySQL, you will see that we uh, will be covering the different database concepts. Uh, yes, hello. Well, sorry I for interruption. Sure. Oh, no, I, you're sure, it's it's fine. Yeah, uh, this, uh, whatever the course you are covering, right? It will cover, for, uh, as a certification part, it will cover only uh, yes. core, or else uh, uh, we can go with uh, advanced one, just like a data engineering uh, uh, certification also. Oh, uh, you can go for advanced one as well. 
so snowplow core is also there but as you can see here we are not focusing on some specific topics and we are understand the other topics as well so you can also go for the advanced course as well if you want yeah any any question please because i mean i have covered almost all the topics which we will cover yeah. so in this yes, part, in this right uh, i didn't see the snow park right which companies are moving now right snow park yep. snow park is actually uh, this is a data manipulation language they if you have heard about the spark technology Mm -hmm. So we have, first of all, we have the PySpark, which is the Python implementation of uh, the Spark language. And then uh, we have the Snowpark, which is again the implementation of uh, the Spark language within the Snowflake Data Warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is a more advanced topic and we will not be covering the Snowpark as a part of this course. And uh, one more thing I didn't see in the this course, right? Python, right? No, Python is not a part of this course. But as a Snowflake developer, Python is required, right? Uh, it is one of, I mean, there are a lot of things which are required as a part of, but we will be focusing mainly on the SQL concepts of this uh, Snowflake data warehouse. So no Python yeah, the is main there. The main focus on the SQL side, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, yeah, Vishwanath. Hi, yes, Vishwanath. We will be uh, doing the migration project. We will see how, so first of all, we will do the MySQL and then we will do the uh, Snowflake Data Warehouse and we will also see how we can migrate from end to end from MySQL to the Snowflake Data Warehouse. So this is Snowflake part, which I have shown the older topics, how long it will take apart from, because the course uh -huh. is three months, right? Mm -hmm. One and a half will take for MySQL and Snowflake Data Warehouse. So it will be one and a half hour session every day. Um, so we will be taking, so uh, it will take somewhere around one and a half or a bit more that to cover the Snowflake Data Warehouse mm -hmm. and your uh, MySQL. And the later one, one and a half month will be taken by the AWS and DBT. Actually, I'm interested for a, this DBT, right? So it's possible to join that particular module. Yeah, you can check with the data vision team. It is possible if you want a specific module, uh, then you can also do, take that. Oh. Yes, that is possible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no issues. Yeah, we pull uh, Ravi here. Hi, Ravi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hi, Ravi. Uh, so uh, most of us have uh, SQL knowledge already. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to learn Snowflake, do we need to in, um, also learn this SQL? in this package uh, or, or yeah. we can only app for snowflake something like that yes yes we also have a flexibility if you want a specific course you can also go for a specific course uh, so that is a flexibility we have it is not like you have to take the entire course if you are interested let us say previous question was there uh, so if you want a specific module you can also take up the specific module as well so there is not a problem uh, if you want the entire course if you want to brush up your sql skills then you can take up those as well but if you want to have uh, the specific course, then you can sure go for that as well. That is all up to you. Okay, okay, fine, thank you. Please don't care. Okay, so please uh, let me know if you have any questions, any concerns, because Krishna sir will also be joining because he uh, who will be taking the um, the AWS part and the DBT part. So if you have any questions, you can also ask him. And please feel free to ask any questions, any concerns. And one more thing which I want to mention here is that now what we have seen is that there is a lot of demand growing for this software data warehouse. So for that, we will be discussing multiple architectures we have, how different tools work together, how different technologies fit together. Uh, either it can be AWS or streaming data and different tools, how the entire pipeline works end to end. So it is more important. Uh, then understanding just the one concept. So that is why we have included multiple tools as a part of this course, so that we can understand the end-to-end -end pipeline. That is the main concepts. And then based on that, if you are comfortable with that, uh, because after the completion is course, after this course, you will be very comfortable to take up any domain you want, okay? Or you can say that, okay, you are confident, confident to the end-to-end -end pipeline, and you will be a very uh, resourceful to your company as well. Uh, we will uh, yeah, share the fee structure also uh, because fee I, structure 
these things you can actually check with the data vision directly you can contact them we have uh, mahesh from our team who can help you with the fee structures but if you have any other questions i mean uh admin parts yes for that you have to contact mahesh um, but for the other purposes yes uh, you have to let us know so we have so hopefully are you in the snowflake data warehouse uh this whatsapp group if you are there uh, so if you're not there, please let us know. Uh, if you want your queries to be answered, you can either reach out to us through the WhatsApp portal or you can also call us uh, directly as well. Okay, so there are multiple portals which have been provided. So that is why we want you to be 100% comfort, comfortable before starting this course. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, hi, Mikuli. Yeah, hi, uh, what is different between Azure database and Snowflake database? Both are Azure, on the uh, see, to be very honest, I don't have much of an idea about different terminologies. There are, yes, there are a lot of players out in the market. And as you can see that a lot of demand is for the Snowflake data warehouse. There are similar data warehouses concept with data warehousing solution by different vendors. If you talk about SAP, we have SAP BW for Anna, which is a business warehouse solution from the SAP. But again, each company has their own pros and cons. So, but if you talk about the Snowflake Data Warehouse, the good thing about Snowflake Data Warehouse is that uh, it is very easily integrable with multiple third party tools. So, either it is multiple uh, different source systems, different visualization tool, different uh, ETL tools. And one more great thing is that it is very easily scalable. You can use Python on top of it. You can run any commands on top of it. So it is a very holistic tool which we have and it, everything is self-managed. So it is provided as a software as a service. So you do not have to worry about managing everything within your software data warehouse account. Whereas if you talk about different vendors, then some of the vendors have a lock-in that it is very difficult to integrate with the third-party solutions or it is very difficult to manage. So if you talk about the learning curve or the ease of maintenance, then in that case, Snowflake is still number one. It is a heading of different uh, vendors we have out there. So we pull in the market, yes, right? We have a Redshift, Big mm -hmm. and the Snowflake, right? Yes. Now, to, to get the project from the customer, right? Mm -hmm. How to convince them? Why why only Snowflake? Why not Redshift? Why not? Because we uh, the customer is using the AWS from a long time, right? And the uh, GCP and all that, right? Mm -hmm. so what is the how to convince them, right? What right. what is the specialty in the uh, Snowflake, right? Because these uh, are the every question they are asking. Why Snowflake? Mm -hmm. Why can't Redshift? Okay, Redshift. Uh, so if you compare Redshift with Snowflake Data Warehouse, so one thing they are completely these different. Are data right? These are completely different solutions, okay? So this is like you are comparing two different things. These are, so because if you look at the your um, Redshift, so Redshift is not just focused on data warehousing, it is focused on your end-to-end -end pipeline, okay? Your data science, your data manipulation, your visualization, everything, all the pipelines are over there. Yeah. Whereas in, but, and as you can see that it is a different breed of product. And you will have to find but different also features of the same concept, right? There are also uh, the source and the uh, storage exactly. and the computer decoupled. Mm -hmm. But again, that is very difficult to manage. Uh, if you have if you have worked in the uh, Redshift, then it is very difficult to manage. It is it has a lot of configurations to be done. Uh, 